this week on Rural Free Delivery. Summer is the season of the wild mushroom, and we search the woods for the aromatic chanterelle. Guide boats were once the only means of transportation throughout New York's Adirondacks, and they're making a comeback and being built in Charlotte. We found one of Vermont's best kept secrets, the oldest fishing camp in the state, where angling isn't the only pastime enjoyed here. And Willem Lang takes us fishing. Settlers who came to New York's Adirondacks at the end of the Revolutionary War hunted and fished for a living. Guideboats first appeared in the 1830s and were used by trappers who needed a boat light enough to portage through dense woods, but sturdy enough to carry men, equipment, and animal pelts. Well, thanks to Steve Kalbeck and David Rosen of Charlotte, the Adirondack guideboat has evolved from a crude hunting skiff into a swift, graceful boat. ingredient was that it be fast and lightweight and able to carry a lot of gear more so than the uh, common canoes that were available at that time. More than a century ago, guiding hunters and fishermen into the dense woods and remote lakes became a way of life for many who lived in upstate New York. Adirondack guide boats were built to withstand the weight of three men, two dogs, and two dead deer in the heavy waves they might encounter on lakes. It's interesting that as, a, as kind of a beast of burden was another purpose that this uh, boat served. It would uh, hold an incredible amount of weight and the more weight that it would hold, it would uh, sink deeper into the water and inherently pick up more stability the more that you loaded it. And these boats became, as uh, uh, said occasionally, the uh, pickup truck of the Adirondacks. Twenty years ago, Steve Callback was searching for a product to build. Luck would have it that he saw a guide boat for the first time and immediately began figuring out how to design one of his own. Information was limited and there weren't many original drawings available. To this day, no one knows exactly who built the first boat. Soon Steve began giving classes on building boats and was constantly adding new elements to his designs while adapting them to modern times, like making it easy to transport a boat on a pickup truck. Everything is basically an invention of need and discovery as, as we go along, or the development of some of my fellow employees will come up with a suggestion and we'll, we'll talk about it, and that will become incorporated into our manufacturing process if it's appropriate. When Steve first began, it was just himself and an occasional assistant. Currently, the company has 10 employees with future expansion coming soon. It's a, a two-to-one epoxy, and we mix filler in there to get the darkening color so hopefully it'll come close to matching the wood. Up until a few years ago, Steve made three or four wooden boats a year. But demand for them has increased and he needed more help, especially on the business end. Now that partner David Rosen has joined the company, they build four boats a month and the requests just keep on coming. David's not a boat builder by trade, but he's always loved them. I'm the person who delivers boats and taking these boats to the new owners and I, I'll frequently shake their hand and say, I want to congratulate you. Where you don't, you think you know how much fun you're going to get from your boat. I really know how much fun you're going to get. Their 15-foot boat weighs about 70 pounds, while many earlier boats were lighter still, at only 45 or 50 pounds. Oars are made of flexible, lightweight cherry wood. It's a beautiful, high-quality material not usually associated with boat building. This design is probably uh, about 150 years old. Oftentimes, it's a misnomer that things become stronger because they're big and large, but actually we find that if you make certain parts on a boat that are smaller and flexible, they're least likely to break because the flexibility of the oar is like having a, a shock absorber with you instead of hitting a very stiff brick wall. This boat 
is capable of taking very high seas and it can roll to one side or the other and in doing so it will uh, pick up stability as it travels uh, to and fro and uh, um, you can take the gunnel of a guide boat and, and put it almost down to the water without uh, going overboard and uh, uh, losing the uh, contents of your, of your boat. Wooden boats take 250 to 300 hours to complete compared to other fiberglass boats that take about 80 hours. Today, there are many companies building and designing guide boats, but the Adirondack Guide Boat Company continues to build a unique boat that's true to the form of the original classics. To me, the most important difference between them is if you and I were out in the boat together, we'd spend the day looking at each other. In a canoe and a kayak, you see the back of somebody's head for the entire day. You hear the second half of a sentence. And th that has nothing to do with its properties over the water, but in you know, being out is a very social activity, and really being with the person that you're with, I find very satisfying. Boating in general is an aesthetic uh, opportunity, and for me that was my original attraction to it. Uh, as, as an artist type and, and going out and fishing in my first guide boat, and it was so beautiful that I just wanted to spend the next 20 years uh, figuring out how to make them. Mm -hmm.